What is up guys, DZ here, and today I wanted to talk about my first Pokemon event, um, the TCG that I went to this past weekend, that was the Michigan State Championships, which I originally thought was a YCS, but I guess it's more like a regional. I guess the regionals are our version of YCSs. Uh, anyway, before I get in the deck profile that like, no one really cares about, what I did want to talk about was the differences between Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon that I noticed from going to just one event, and they were all very clear to me. So... First off, uh, you can't have any electronics on the table, so I was gonna, like, I kinda had this joke going where I was gonna, like, use a calculator with a calculator case and a spell ground and, like, have the Yu-Gi-Oh set up and then have people ask me why I, like, had all these weird supplies, but, uh, at the beginning of round one, I, the guy told me I would get a disqualification if I had the calculator on the table, so I was like, what the heck? And then the judge confirmed that, so that was kinda weird. Um, also, you can't ask how much time is left in round for Pokemon, which is, like, really weird, so... Pokemon is a huge stalling issue, and I guess that's how they combat it. But, like, even if you're done with your round, you don't actually know. So I found myself looking at my clock, um, not my clock, my phone clock, um, before every round. So I kind of had a good idea. With that, um, there was actually a lunch break. Uh, <laughs> I'm so used to every Yu-Gi-Oh! regional, someone saying, will this event have a lunch break? No, and I always wonder why they said that. But maybe it's because other games... Have lunch breaks. If anyone plays Magic, please let me know if you had a lunch break. Although I guess the Indianapolis Regional this past weekend that Cordero was at, I guess that had a lunch break too. But in general, Yu-Gi-Oh events do not have those. Um, also, the vendor and just people in general were all buying cards at really weird prices, like at weird intervals. So like people were buying things at like twenty cents um, instead of like a dollar, and like the vendor was doing like exact prices that he had calculated not even values so he'd be like well yeah this card is like 674 i'm just like that's that's kind of weird didn't he just want to sell for seven wouldn't that be easier also i don't know if this is at every pokemon event but this particular vendor didn't have like the setup that Yu Gi Oh vendors have where you can see all the cards you had to like look them up on a computer that he brought with him and then you can like see if he had it so he didn't have to look for them that just seems really inefficient to me and uh let me think Oh, also, like, everyone shuffles with the bridge shuffle where you, like, uh, bend your cards back, like, super far and do that. And, like, every single person, it just looks like they're ruining their cards. Like, every time I've traded with a Pokemon person, like, their cards are always super warped. Now I know why. Uh, and also, people, like, I'm using, uh, and these look orange on camera, that's kind of weird. Uh, but I'm using some red dragon shields, which are kind of like PC whites, kind of not, um... I didn't like the white dragon shields because you could see through the back of the card uh, to see the Pokemon symbol, but uh, the red ones seem to work fine. But everyone uses, like, official Pokemon sleeves and official Pokemon mats. Like, they're really, like, they really have a good sense of pride about their company that they're playing for. So, like, I don't know, Pokemon players just seem to like Pokemon a lot more than Yu-Gi-Oh players like Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, anyway, I'm going to go through my deck list and assuming you know the basic rules of Pokemon... I'm going to explain these things in terms of, like, Yu-Gi-Oh!, but I can't explain everything in terms of Yu-Gi-Oh!, because it's a very different game. Uh, but uh, maybe there'll be, like, two Pokemon players that watch my channel that'll understand what I'm talking about. So, uh, I played a Kyogre deck, so I played uh, four Kyogre EXs. Uh, these are the same card, they're just different artworks, because I couldn't pick up more of this this artwork. Um, but they have the same attacks and everything. Um, they're kind of shitty, but uh, Primal Kyogre is, like, really cool. Because it has, like, I think they're called, like, Delta abilities. I think it's a Delta symbol. That's an Alpha symbol. So this guy's Alpha Growth. So you can equip two energies to him every turn. So, like, you can power up this 150 attack in two turns. Um, and also does 30 to all your opponent's benched EXs. So, like, you can create some, like, sweeps with this. There are multiple times where I was taking, like, four prizes at the same time. Uh, I also played two Seismitoad EX. I think this card's, like, really annoying. Um, I don't like Seismitoad EX decks because they're just, like, super slow and basically just poke for 30 or 50 for the entire game, and it's super boring. Uh, but I played these because they were good water Pokemon. I think I would take them out for Suicune, though, because Suicune is, like, a counter to uh, EX decks. But I just didn't like Seismitoad very much. Uh, I played one Keldeo EX. I'm playing Floatstone, so Keldeo, you can uh, switch it in with its ability and then switch it out for a different Pokemon with the Floatstone, so you get a free switch every turn. That's really nice. Uh, and then lastly, I played, uh, just two Blastoise. Uh, it has the Deluge ability, so you can, like, uh, move any water energies from your hand to Pokemon you control, uh, as many times as you want per turn. Um, 
And that's really helpful because you can like build up your primal Kyorg EXs. And the, the goal of this deck is to put, uh, like obviously Blastoise helps out a lot, but like when you have two pri primal Kyorg EXs, their attack, like you have to move two energies so you can like move it to the second one. So you have like six energies between them and you just keep uh, bouncing it back and forth. And Blastoise just makes you get those six energies without waiting three turns to do it. Uh, that was a pretty low monster count. Um, I mean, there's only seven Pokemon I could actually open with without mulliganing, but overall I thought it worked really well. Um, for the supporters, I just played pretty much standard stuff, so three Sycamore, four N, uh, three Archie's Ace in the Hole. Uh, this is like your, this is how you get out Blastoise. You, uh, like you discard your entire hand and then bring back Blastoise with Archie Ace in the hole. You can also bring back uh, Primal Kyogre, but every single time I bought, brought back Blastoise, because like all I would do was just like search Blastoise super early on just so I could discard it and then bring back with Archie's. Uh, and then I played one Skyla, which was like okay. I just like Skyla is like way too slow. Like I would Skyla for like Ultra Ball and that was okay, but like in gen general, this card was just so slow. Uh, and then one Lysander. I know a lot of people play two, but I couldn't find the space, so whatever. I played four versus Seeker. Like, this card is ridiculous because you can add back any of your supporters. Um, and that's why I, would, like, I like versus Seeker because it me meant that I didn't have to play three or four um, Archies. I could just play versus Seekers, um, so I didn't, like, clog them. Like, every game that I resolved an Archie, I won, but it was difficult sometimes. So with versus Seeker, you could discard the Archie super early on with, like, a Sycamore and not really care, because you can just uh, get it back. And then you can also, like, loop Lysanders or whatever. Uh, then I played four Ultra Balls and one Dive Ball. Like, the Ultra Balls, even though all your monsters are water, like, the Ultra Ball um, discarding two helps you out so that you can, like, empty your hands so you can Archies. Um, I just found Ultra Ball to be, like, inf infinitely better. Uh, the items we played were two Float Stone for the free switch and two... Uh, Kyogre Spirit Link. The Float Stones pretty much only went on Keldeos. They sometimes went on uh, Blastoise. Because, uh, I don't know, Blastoise attack is pretty shitty. So I guess this was either going on Keldeo or Seismitoad. Um, and then the Kyogre Spirit Links obviously only go on Kyogre. I was going to play, like, I'm playing four uh, Primal Kyogres, so I was going to play three of these, because I saw a deck profile of Mega Aggron that was playing just three and three, and then they played three Spirit Links, and I was only playing two. But I think two worked pretty well like just because uh primal kyogre has the growth ability like you can afford to just kind of pass your turn i think it's fine i played two professor's letter and two superior energy retrieval this card's like insane like you discard uh two cards to add back four energies to your hand um, and then you can just equip them all with deluge like it's really good like incredible uh for the one of i played one starling megaphone one escape rope, one switch, one enhanced hammer, and my ace spec was uh, computer search. Obviously, like discarding two to add anything to your hand is pretty good, I would say. Um, and and it helps with like getting rid of like shit in my hand. And then I also played uh, let's see, five, five, uh, twelve water energies. Like I was gonna play double colorless, um, but like the only um, guy that you have that actually wants double colorless is like Seismitoad, and I honestly found Seismitoad just really bad the entire tournament. Because the problem was, is that like regular Seismitoad decks, they set it up so that they uh, like they have multiple Seismitoads. So when they finally kill the first one, like because they can just keep poking it. I mean, it's gonna like Seismitoad isn't gonna do very much damage, and I'm not playing Muscle Bands because uh, I didn't want to play that many items. I felt like the Float Zones were better. Like, I might swap out one Float Zone for Muscle Band, but like. The uh, so Seismitoad's only doing 30 damage, so it's not really hard to just like poke it, um, especially if they have an EX Pokemon that does anything more than 30. Um, and then what happens is like once they finally kill a Seismitoad, now they have like 10 items in their hand. Um, so I don't have if you don't have that second Seismitoad to back it up, and I often didn't because I wanted to just search for like, like while I was Seismitoading, I was setting up the primal Kyogre. Uh, so, like, I wouldn't have the second Tizen Toad to back it up, and then they would just use other item cards in one turn and kill me, so. But, uh, overall, it was a really fun event, I would say. Don't be mad at me for posting it on this channel. I don't care enough to post it on a second channel, and these look really cool. Hollow. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know if I'll post Pokemon content on this channel, because people get super pissed, but I just started it, and I think it was pretty fun. 
Um, a lot of stuff was different, and I thought my deck was pretty cool. I might update it eventually if I go to any more real events, but uh, hopefully you guys don't hate me. I will see you later. Bye.